it all started because I uh, was m my grandmother or somebody bought me a Van Halen album. As a child, I wanted to be a guitar player, but my, my mom and dad were like, you can't play the electric guitar in the school band. You have to be like your brothers, who are both like lead players. And I chose drums because out of all the things happening, the, the percussion section was definitely doing the coolest stuff. I was encouraged by people in high school. That was part of the rites of passage that got me here at the time. The punk rock scene was like the important thing growing up in my area and uh, I think that had to be there, it had to be in place because it was such a very white, rich, uber republican kind of uncultured area and kids needed a release. Now, what happened was, after a while, it became this thing. Punk bands, when I first started, they all sounded different, and they all had different influences, and everybody was trying to be different and do original stuff. And then, you know, towards the middle of high school, it became this, this look and this social scene and this thing and this fashion statement. And I don't know who to blame for that. I don't know if it's like Green Day or whoever came in and, you know, and like, you know, kids found this place, but that's, once it became that, I was completely alienated. So uh, I think that's really important. That's, that's like the first step to how I branched out in these other things. I went to school in New York, and I was pretty close to the city. And at that time, in the 90s, there was a, you know, the downtown New York scene it was like, I got really into it at that time in my life. And, uh, that made me want to explore avant-garde and experimental music and uh, that's, you know, I started playing with uh, in pedo. Pedo was a band that um, was basically, there was um, one guy, Mike Galena, writing the material, and it definitely embraced music from other countries. We started playing New York, and that was like right around the time when like Knitting Factory was like, a place to play and like you had tonic and places like that so we kind of all embraced that whole New York scene <laughs> that band I met Mike Biscop and uh, you know he's he's played in No Use for Humans, he's played with Universal Rebel, he's done these other bands with me, uh, Planetary Escape Pod and Just the Tip, he's you know he's played with all of them. That band was important for meeting those people. I hear you play music as well, is that true? I do, I'm in a power duo called No Use for Humans. A power duo? Yes. And what kind of well, it entails uh, me on percussion, as well as um, the great Sean Wegler on keyboards. And what is the name of the power duo? We are No Use for Humans. What is No Use for Humans? 
for humans is music, destruction of Earth. I had a lot of songs that I put down on a four track that other bands I played in it either wasn't fun for them to play or they weren't interested in playing it or whatever the reason was like you know Sean Wegler was the only person like interested in like making this music live and performing it in front of people so yeah you have this kind of like you know ideology of like no use for humans and you have this like band that no one wants to play with so the name kind of fit <laughs> After college, I decided that it was important to, uh, you know, learn from other people and take lessons. And I, and I think I will take lessons forever. I think I'm a student for life. Attended a. Uh, drumming workshop that was led by Ciro Baptista and Billy Martin. I mean, when you decide I'm going to be a drummer, you don't, it's not because you decide to be a drummer, you are a drummer, no? You, nah, it's like a, it's, 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 it's going to take a while <laughs> to come, and that's, it's hard. From there I started taking lessons with uh, Billy Martin. He's got this whole system playing claves and has this whole book on his own notation. Totally open to my solo playing. I wouldn't be where I am today without the teachers I've had, some of which I've had the extreme pleasure of performing with and recording with, so it's very exciting to be like making music with people who have profoundly influenced you. Another drummer I was influenced by was Amir Ziv and uh, he's a drummer for Droid. <laughs> Speak Softly and Carry a Big Stick is a drumming project with a lot of drummers and I basically put together like a wish list and that whole project was done over email. They would just send uh, audio files of, you know, drumming. The project was based on don't tell me what you're sending me, I don't want to know, like, I don't care how long it is or how short it is or what style it's in or anything like that. But the spirit of it was not to totally arrange like parts, like I would listen to it maybe like two or three times and then go. Like, you know, it wasn't, you know, super planned out because it wa I wanted it to have that spirit of like live improv but still be structured. The solo thing started because people were asking for it. Not just like my work with YMCA and teaching kids and whatever and people wanting workshops, but you know, there was, there was this thing where like you know, if, if you can't get a band together, like, do this, and, you know, I was, I was recording stuff, and people were encouraging me to, to, to do that, so, um, I also wanted to try it, see how far I could take it. so long I wouldn't I wouldn't do things because I was scared of them I wouldn't play things because I was afraid of what would happen or like that was when I kind of cared about what other people thought and like anybody who was there like you know once you 
get rid of that and that's not part of the equation, then you get into this like new thing. And I think that's really the only way to do it. Being pushed out of your comfort zone and taking those risks are really the only way to kind of get into yourself and, and come up with your own stuff. And if you hate this press kit documentary, I hope it makes you do something. Or if you like it, I hope it makes you do something. And really that's the point. And uh, that goes back to creative function and it doesn't always, it's not always an aesthetically pleasing thing. So, you know, I hope whether it's positive or negative, whoever is watching this does something or like is inspired to do something with their own stuff. There's a lot of people who say, I can do that better, I can do that better, but unless they do it, like, you know, I hope that's, that's what comes across. Thank you.